Hey friends, and welcome back to your next Monostone drum lesson. In this lesson we're going to talk about playing with your hands 101, basic understanding of how to do this. So, first thing I want to reiterate again is that we are playing with our hands now instead of with these implements. So, we're basically hitting our hands on this steel tank. And um, it's really important, I would really like to encourage everyone to start by playing gently as opposed to overplaying and playing too hard because um, for one, you're gonna get better sound and better finesse if you practice playing gently initially. Also, um, you don't wanna hurt your hands. Like hitting a steel tank over and over again, if you do it the wrong way, is definitely one way to bruise your hands or hurt your hands in some way. And we do not want that. So um, it's just good to start out by being gentle and that's gonna be the best way for you to learn initially. So uh, one of the key concepts for getting a good tone out of the instrument using your hands is that your, hand, your finger needs to bounce directly off the tongue just like the mallet, the rubber mallet, bounces off. So, just like the rubber, your skin and your finger needs to bounce. And contact with the tongue just needs to be as brief as possible. And that's going to allow the tongue to reverberate and for the tone of the specific note to ring out. But if you are encountering a situation where the tones aren't ringing out, you might be hitting it and basically making prolonged contact with the tongue such that when you hit it, you're also kind of hol holding your finger on it too long and it's block dampening out and blocking the, re the reverberations from happening. So it's blocking the tone, you know, something like that. You can hear how dead that sounds. It's because my finger isn't getting out of the way in order for the note to resonate. So that's kind of rule number one, is that you want to get um, a bounce. And uh, that leads me into the next piece of advice, which is which fingers to use, what parts of the hand to use. Um, and what I find works best for me, and just, I don't know really how else you would do it, is um, I use the like side of my thumb knuckle for playing down here on these notes. Actually, I, I use it all the time even for playing up here, even though it's really not the best technique to use. It's not the best technique to go all over the drum like that with my hands. Um, it's just a lot of movement and the more you move your hands around, the probably the less accurate you're gonna be in, the, in your playing. So if that's a priority to you, it may not be. Um, but I like to use my thumbs for the lower half of the drum, or this is like my, this is what I try to do. I use my drum, my hands for like the lower half of the drum, and then my pointer finger, the pad of the pointer finger, just that part, and also the pads of the ring finger or middle finger, just depending because, you know, if I'm playing this bass note down here, I can reach over to this note with my ring finger. So 
see how much less movement that is than if I were to try to play with my thumb only. I have to move my hand so much just to get to the different notes. But um, one of the benefits of playing with your hands is that you can spread them across the drum. You can play four notes at a time, five notes at a time, six notes at a time, just depending and without having to move your hand so much. So yeah, like this bony knuckle part of your thumb, especially on these notes. And again, you want to be as soft as possible. I'm really, the technique that I use for flicking my hands and getting the notes to come out clean, it's just a light flick. Um, so really, what you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to be bringing your hands all the way up here every time you're playing. You don't want to be moving like this and creating all that motion. For one, you're probably gonna be hitting the drum too hard. You might hurt your hands. Um, for two, it's just, you're gonna be able to play so much more if you, I don't know, if you keep your hands close. So what I recommend is to start playing with your hands, actually just start with your hands setting on the drum and then raise your hands like an inch off the drum, half an inch off the drum. And that's really the prim that's really where your hands should stay in relation to the drum is like about an inch or half an inch off of the surface and not moving all over the place. Um, so yeah, just right off the surface. And then it's a light flick and then I'm simultaneously like allowing my finger or my thumb to relax so that it can kind of just fall on the note, just like we were allowing the mallet to fall on the note with a little extra flick. And then one of the keys I find, especially for these notes up here, is you're doing a light flick and then right before impact, you pull back a little bit with your hands. So you've got this downward energy and then you pull away. And that allows your finger to like whip down a little bit. So it's this like flicking and pulling away motion, kind of like a, you know, fishing line or something. Um, a whip, just like a bull whip. And that's what allows you to uh, get the bounce out of your finger so that the note can ring clearly. Also, something to note for playing really, really cleanly is if you can try to not let your palm hit the drum as you're playing, like, you know, as you're coming down, you can probably hear the noise of my palm hitting, as opposed to no palm hitting. So it's just something to be mindful of. Uh, you might actually like that sound. I personally like, I like to have my hands hit the drum while I'm playing, but I do it in a way that sounds good to me and that I'm doing intentionally. And it helps me keep the beat and keep the rhythm. Um, just a personal preference, but you know, there's also times when you don't want all that noise behind the notes.
that noise, so, or maybe you do, like I do. As you can tell, my right hand is way more fluid than my left hand, and you're probably going to have a dominant hand as well, and that's okay. Um, also, it definitely takes practice to loosen your hands up and to get the technique and to get the feel down. So if you struggle initially with this, it took me probably like three or four months of playing pretty regularly to feel like I was playing well with my hands or getting a really good sound with my hands. Um, otherwise I was using my mallets most of the time. Now my, my predominant way that I play is with my hands. So getting back to um, good technique for playing with your hands, in general, just with instruments and everything, like you really, it really is kind of better to not overexert and expend more energy than necessary. And that's why I'm a big advocate of keeping your hands close. Um, it's the same thing on guitar. You want to keep your fingers close to the fretboard so that you can more quickly and easily reach notes. Same thing for keeping your hands close by. And uh, one thing to consider as you're learning to play with your hands is can you play the lower notes with your thumbs and play the upper notes with your fingers? Um, one, I think the upper notes actually sound better with the fingers than they do with the thumb, but it's gonna allow you to be able to play down it. you to be able to keep your hands relatively motionless in terms of moving around the drum they're just staying right here you know I'm reaching across the drum with my index finger to hit this note even the pinky can be involved so I've got my like in this case I've got my pointer finger here my thumb down here my pinky stretching across and hitting there, and my pointer finger on the other, on the same hand, hitting here. And as you can tell, it takes some practice to get those tones. So, I typically only do the reachy thing with my dominant hands. I don't typically, I don't typically play with my non-dominant, you know, three lower fingers, just my pointer finger. But of course, you can definitely try. So, speaking of dominant hand versus non-dominant hand, whether you're playing with mallets or you are playing with your hands. Um, as you're starting out, something to consider for your non-dominant hand, which is for me, my left hand, is to hold more of the rhythm in the left hand, like a stable, steady rhythm, kind of like a hi-hat would. Uh, just keep that tempo or that rhythm and then let the dominant hand do most of the melodic work. So it's the one that's kind of moving around and creating the melody more so than the non-dominant hand, which um, what I like to do with my non-dominant hand is just to ride a couple notes. So this hand might be moving around, my dominant hand might be moving around, but my left hand might be just hanging out on one or two notes and switching around there and then maybe playing a little flare here and there. So I'll give you an example of that um, here. So you, you can see I'm writing this note with this thumb and just keeping In that case, I just, you know, I flicked up to another note. So that 
that's something that I, t that I tend to do with my left hand is just write a note and the sound of the drum is gonna change depending on which note I'm writing over here it's going to set a different chord So that's a really common rhythm and pattern that I play on the drum. That's one of my voices, you know, that's, I can't get away from it. <laughs> but anyways, just wanted to share the concept of left hand holding and writing one note, and then the right hand or the dominant hand, whatever that is for you, playing more of the melody. And you definitely don't have to do it that way. You can try to be more melodic with your left hand if you want to. Um, but right, I just find that writing the note is a really good entry point for myself and for others to learn, you know, how to play with their hands in a way that makes sense. So that's it for how to play, for the basics of how to play with your hands. Um, main takeaways from this video are one, not playing too loudly or too hard. Take care of your hands. If they start hurting, take a break. Two, uh, keeping your hands close to the drum, not moving them super far away. Three, using your thumb bones, the inner thumb bones as mallets and the, the pads of your pointer and other fingers as well. And then, uh, yeah, how to basically ride a note with one, your non-dominant hand while you play a melody with the other. So I hope that was helpful for you. Um, oh, and the concept of bouncing your finger off the note. So anyways, I hope that was helpful for you. That should be, I mean, that should be all the basic information you need to know to start getting a decent tone, a good tone out of the drum using your hands, which as I said, can take some practice. So definitely, um, definitely work on it and don't, uh, don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen the way you imagine right out of the gate, but uh, just keep practicing and you will get better, I promise. Peace.